Welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. My name is Martin Turner. And during this year, 2017, we're going week by week uh, through key factors in making the most out of Cork Express. Well, uh, today I want to look at getting more out of master pages. Um, let's go to a new document, go to the screen, uh, and we're gonna do document new, uh, just a regular plain document, uh, and uh, we'll offer various things uh, for this. Um, I'm gonna give the layout a name, so we'll call it uh, Martin's Page uh, 1, or Martin, Martin's Magazine. Get two M's in there. Um, this is the print layout. I could do the same with the digital layout. So if I'm going to make content for HTML5, I would go to digital. But for, for now, I'm going to go with print. Um, and we're going to do a, uh, let's say, portrait document. Uh, I can actually initially tell it to do a number of pages. I'm not, not going to, because we're going to use an automatic text box. Uh, and we're going to have, uh, I think, uh, three columns. OK. so. Um, my margins at the top, 15, bottom 20, inside 15, outside 10. Um, yeah, that's okay. Uh, we can live with that. You, you want to make sure as often as possible that you don't have the same margins for the inside, the outside, the top and the bottom. Now, if you start with Microsoft Word, you'll, you'll be used to just putting in 2.54 centimeters uh, for every single margin, because that's what Word always defaulted to, and that's an inch all round, which makes no sense uh, in A4 uh, or other paper sizes, which are all based on the metric system. And there's nothing particularly good about an inch. It doesn't make a particularly good margin. You'll give much more rhythm to your page if you have uh, a broader inside margin and a narrower outside margin. Now, the only time you wouldn't do that is if you're doing like a one-page thing, like a poster or an advertisement, where you're going to have to plan the page slightly differently. But for now, we'll go with this. And uh, let's do OK. And now we've got our page. Um, let's load some text into that. So I'm just going to double-click on there. And I'm going to do uh, File, Import. I could also do Command-D or Control-E on a PC. And I've got this text, which I've, I've already prepared as express tags, and that's got some uh, declarations in it about style sheets. And that's just to, to play with on here. Now, as you can see, this is being a little bit annoying because I've got these um, uh, quite large titles which don't fit onto the three column grid. So what I want to do now is go to a master page and do something about it. So uh, I'm gonna go to window, I'm going to go to page layout. I usually have page layout open all the time because it's quite a convenient way, um, uh, as you can see, of navigating through that entire document. So if I double click on uh, a page, it, it takes me there. Uh, you can also do the same thing from the bottom here um, uh, where you'll actually see a, a preview of the page, but I'm, I'm kind of used to doing the page layout way. Page layout can also move pages around and put them in different places. So for example, if I had a, a, an eight page layout, which is gonna end up uh, as uh, A3 spreads, I could actually just move the back page to the front page. Um, now actually I've defined in this layout, let me just change that, allow odd pages on the left is off. So we're just gonna quickly go to layout properties over here, allow odd pages on the left. Uh, okay, that might change something, don't worry about that. And I'm gonna move that last page to the beginning. Uh, now, it, it still flows through correctly, but it just means that the back page of my spread is gonna work, um, okay, uh, probably not for an eight-pager because we have to do a little bit of, of uh, imposition, but for a four-pager, uh, that would work very well with a back and a front spread. Either way, let's put that back for now because what we're gonna look at is master pages. So on a master page, uh, you can have as many master pages as you want, but try to keep it simple. Uh, you've got your uh, chain, which is the document chain. So when automatic pages are created, it chains stuff from here to here, and on this page, from here to here. Uh, and at the moment, it's chaining into this three-column grid, which we, we created. Um, as I bring this one down, you'll see that it, it tells me I've matched the size of that, which is, is, is very helpful. 
Um, but why don't we actually, instead of just that, uh, have a title space which is going right the way across. And now I'm going to chain that to that and that to that. Do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to chain, uh, just click on that again, chain, uh, I'll go back to there and then come back to here. So chain this. Well, I haven't created the box yet. That would that would help if I made that first. So I can just create another box. And again, it tells me I've matched the size of the box. That's great. So now we're going to chain that to there and that to there. And let's go back to the document and see what's happened. Um, OK. Uh, that doesn't seem to have worked. Um, let's see what we've done wrong. So why hasn't that chained itself? Uh, let's, OK. I think what I've, what I've done here is I'm probably need to just remove that and re-import it. And I hope this time it's going to work correctly. Um, yeah, that's right. That's, that's much better. Um, so uh, what it's now done is it's created my across the top. Um, oh, it doesn't appear to have linked in on that front page. That's very strange. It's done it on the rest of them. Um, OK, don't know why that's happened. Uh, let's just link that to there first. OK, and now the rest has all worked properly. Um, so I'm not sure what happened there, but don't worry. These things do happen. Uh, and already you can begin to see that we're, we're getting a little bit of shape to the page, uh, which is working here. Now, on a master page, you can have all kinds of things. The, the most obvious thing you're going to want to have, let's go back there. Um, so I'm double clicking on master page over here uh, on the right of the screen. Uh, the most obvious thing you're going to want to have uh, is a footer of some kind. And that footer would normally uh, begin with uh, at that margin and then at uh, a new line, and then uh, Command-3, and Command-3 on a Mac, Control-3 on a PC. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to uh, put in a, uh, a page number character. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to uh, right justify that, so I'll use the right in the measurements panel there. And that's over there. Let's go back to the document. And as you can see, let's do F7 to lose those guidelines. As you can see, those numbers are in there. Um, probably I should have picked the, uh, a larger bottom margin. Uh, usually I take a mar bottom margin which is three times the unit of the, the smallest margin, but never mind. Um, uh, okay, let's go back to let's turn F7 again so I can just see the guidelines there. Um, now, what else have we got? Well, um, if I just take that up a little bit. I'm going to just move my uh, text box now. I, I, I want to create um, uh, a bit more space. I, I can change the margins so I can I can uh, master guides and grid uh, when I'm in page layout, uh, when I'm in master pages. And I can change those overall margins. In fact, I think I will. I'll make that 30 because that's what I wanted originally. I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, uh, so that's great. So we're just going to move that up now. Um, to there, uh, and move that one up to there, that's good, and on the other side we'll do uh, the same thing, uh, and move it up to there, and if we just go back to our page now, uh, okay, the front page is being a bit troublesome, so I'm going to delete that, um, and uh, delete that one as well, uh, and we've got recreated now, and, and uh, as you can see, everything has, has flowed through the documents. That's all been changed. So on any box which you haven't already changed uh, as a result uh, of doing some special work on that particular page, any box unchanged, when you change the master page, will change. But if you've changed that box at all, master page then knows not to change it, because otherwise he'd be undoing your work. What else can we do? Well. Um, uh, another thing that people like these days is running headers. So let's create a running header. Now, how do we do that? We're going to go to Window, uh, and we're going to go to uh, Content Variables. And I'm going to do plus for a new one, and I'm going to uh, create a running header. Uh, it could also be a footer. It doesn't know, but it's called a running header. And we'll leave it at running header 1. I can call it anything I want. And what we're going to do is look for Title 1. So it's looking for stuff which is tagged as the paragraph style sheet, title one, or as the character style sheet, title one. I'll probably take title one 
the character bits. I might want two or three different paragraph things because I might have uh, some variations I want. And we're going to use the first on the page. We can also use the last on the page, the first on spread or the last on spread, depending on, on exactly what you're doing. And now I'm going to just create a box at the top here. So I'm going to lower this box uh, a little bit now, the title box, uh, and uh, this box, and you can see it's telling me I've matched. I'm going to put a new box in here. I'm not going to link this up. This is not part of the document chain. And all I'm going to do is insert running header there. And I think this time I'll just drag this across. So I'm dragging and then I'm pressing Option or Alt once I've started dragging. And again, I'm going to use uh, right down here at the bottom in the measurements panel, uh, right. Um, or actually for running header, I might well use center, but we're going to use right for now. Um, and now let's go back to the document. And what we see is, press F7 again to clear those, those guidelines. What we see is that as the document changes, goes through, so the uh, running headers are changing to suit. Now, you can do all kinds of things with master pages. And uh, if you were designing a magazine, you'd probably have five or six different master pages with different things on them. Uh, in a later episode, we're going to talk about working with a grid, which is also a very powerful way which you can use in conjunction with master pages or without to give your document organic consistency where everything looks like it goes together but the, the reader isn't overwhelmed with how and why it goes together. Well, I hope that's been interesting. Uh, that's master pages, getting more out of them. Just to recap, uh, we can create master pages, have as many as we want. Anything that goes on the master page goes on every page which is assigned to that master page. Uh, and uh, as long as you don't change the, the box, uh, anything that you change on the master page gets then changed on every page assigned to it. Uh, you can use running footers, you can use running headers. There's other bits of variable text like the date, file name and so on. All worth exploring. Experiment as always. Uh, my name is Marcel Turner. This is Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. Uh, you can get the book of the same name from Amazon or from your local retailer. And I hope you'll join us for the rest of the series.